So let me introduce to you Mark Spielman. It's really exciting to see so many new faces here. And, uh, you know, what's happened in our neighborhood is we've reached a tipping point where it's really good to move into Beacon Hill. You know, the uh, climate and uh, just environment seems to be encouraging people to move in. People are fixing up their houses. People are making a difference. And it's making this a, an attractive neighborhood for uh, a variety of people. What we need to do in zoning is to try to ensure that uh, things, you know, continue to grow, continue to do well, and a lot of it has to do with our housing stock. We've got easily the best uh, uh, group of, uh, you know, homes that uh, are from the 1920s and, and have that kind of uh, look to them that everybody really is looking for now. You know, the craft and style home is, is what people are looking for. They're extremely well built. Uh, they last a long time. If you take care of them, they do well. Uh, unfortunately, we've got uh, recently some problems with heavy rains. And heavy rains have brought out a whole bunch of carports. People are building carports all over the neighborhood. And it's to try to keep their cars uh, dry. Unfortunately, carports uh, also have the adverse effect that if they're not designed and put up properly, uh, we, if you go around the neighborhood, you will see some chimneys where it looks like there shouldn't be a chimney. Uh, generally, that's because the water from one of the uh, carports has run off, eroded what was underneath the foundation for the chimney, and the whole thing kind of gives way eventually. So. Uh, you know, you think, well, everybody has their rights as a property owner to do what they want, but a lot of times by doing what they want affects the uh, neighbor's property and, and makes a big difference for them. As far as uh, uh, what Cynthia said about getting new people into the neighborhood, please, if you can, come to a zoning meeting. You don't have to be an expert on zoning. Uh, a lot of the things there we can, you know, explain to you. But we really need, we've, we've been averaging 20 cases a month. I mean, that's, that's 20 different uh, properties that we've discussed and had to take some sort of action on or had to get uh, some resolution from the city about. We're going to discuss a few of those uh, that we need to make a, a vote on. Uh, but first, uh, uh, Everett, would you go over what the uh, design standards for a neighborhood are for uh, carports? I know we're running long, so I'll go very quickly. And we've put on the web a simplified version of the NCD for residences. And so if you want to know uh, carport, building setbacks, anything, go to Bahana, B -H -A -N -A -S -A net, and then click on ZUD. And on that page, you'll see all sorts of resources for um, that we use in ZUD, including a link to the NCD, uh, both the NCD document and then simplified pages for each issue that you'd be looking for. But here's the rundown of carport. A carport must be constructed in the rear unless you have a corner lot. If it's attached to your house, it must be recessed from the front by at least five feet. It has to be constructed of building materials with the same scale, proportion, and or profile of the house, or as the house, and it must maintain the same roof lines as the primary structure. Temporary carport structures like those aluminum ones and uh, the tent ones, those are prohibited outright. And uh, as Mark said, with the hail and the rain, I mean, there is just an epidemic of carports that's broken out in Beacon Hill, but um, there is a way to do it right. Okay, uh, one of the very first issues that we've got in front of us is uh, uh, carport that's uh, they're asking for variance from all of the uh, listed uh, uh, requirements and it's a carport that's at uh, uh, 1114 Linwood they're asking for our support in uh, uh, giving them all those exemptions for the carport that they put up uh, we need to present uh, this sort of a yay or nay on this issue, uh, you know, the zoning would recommend that we 
uh, uh, do not support his uh, request as a waiver for all the uh, uh, restrictions, the NCD guidelines on this particular carport. Uh, but we, we usually bring these to the neighborhood and uh, like to have your vote on it. Uh, yes, and we're going to discuss. Yes, go ahead. Well, can I make a quick motion sure. to see if this might be to everybody's liking? You know, right now we've got a lot of cases coming up. We're not meeting in July. Because I'm not loud enough. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm making a motion, or at least entertaining a thought, that we give the, the permission to make decisions until we meet again in August on all the different cases that are going on now, and let them represent the city until August when we meet again. The city or the neighborhood. We'll we'll, the neighborhood. we'll represent the neighborhood okay. on their decisions. We almost always. Uh, tend to go with their recommendation. They've been doing this a long time. They know the NCD and, and, and they know when exceptions. I don't know if that, we don't normally do that. We normally bring things to the neighborhood, but in this case, unless we want to go through all the cases separately, can we make a motion that we allow them to represent us to the city um, until August when we meet again? So, so much. You're, you're part of that. So, oh, I have so many. Okay. Okay, so do I get a second? Okay, so you have a motion um, for Zud to make the decisions about these properties and represent them until August. Okay. All in favor of that resolution? Aye. All in who are not in favor. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Do you mind like telling me because it might be important why you're not in favor? Yeah. Oh, it's only personal. I just feel that it's probably a one-off instance sure. of not having a meeting, right? Uh -huh. Yes. Maybe it's just so worth all, having all, a meeting. Only because we're not having a meeting next month. It, can we just have a meeting? Well, the problem is the school's not available, and we're already going to have to find another place in um, August. And we're trying to save money by not having one month where we don't have a newsletter. So usually people don't come in July anyway. So we okay. picked that month for us to be off. Are we talking about actual cases going in front of zoning and planning? No, in front of Board of Adjustments, mostly. Yeah. Well, in front of zoning, too. Yeah, this this one we want to get a vote on. Too, in case yeah. Okay. There, there are a bunch of them coming up. They're coming up so fast, we can't even hardly keep up with them. Yeah. Can I make a yes. the motion? Absolutely. And that is that any of your decisions follow the standards that have already been adopted in our decision. They always, we always. Well, that's good. But not, not necessarily. But zoning so so does What are our standards? So, what would we propose to do about zoning cases? What are we talking about, Mark? How many zoning cases do we have that are going to get heard before we have, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to go through all the ones that we have in front of us right now, real quickly. And, and, you know, we we'll try and get through the ones that are here. There, is, there will be other ones coming up that we don't know about. Yes? Can we just, instead of having a, an association meeting for the zoning, invite people who want to vote to the ZUD committee meeting? Absolutely. ZUD is open to anybody. Right. But make it so people can go there to know that they can vote at that meeting since we're not having a July neighborhood meeting. Okay. So we're not we're having a meeting. We should make, I mean, do the motion. Oh, Facebook, that would be your notes. Okay. You want to do that ever? Can you handle that? Can you repeat the motion uh, uh, we, for the minute? Like so many people, we're not going to be here in July. Yeah. We, we will pu publish the ZUD oh. meeting on Facebook. So if you're a member of Beacon Hill Area Neighborhood Association Facebook group, you'll receive the notice uh, of the meeting, and you're either there or not. Is there a date at this time? We always meet on the well, first Thursday of the month, always, unless it's a specific Okay. Uh, so one motion is is the motion that we have a meeting and decide there that people can vote there, or are you allowing uh, Zud to make the decision? Was well, you asked for her her answers to why she voted against, but what was the vote? I mean, it already made a decision. On well, we made we made, okay. We voted for allowing Zud okay. to make the thing. Okay. If you are interested in these cases, keep. Come to the ZUD meeting, yes. and that way you can have input on the decision. Yeah. ZUD, ZUD will be meeting 
please come to the meeting. Uh, your voice will be heard. Uh, in lieu of uh, anything unusual, we're going to default to whatever the neighborhood conservation district standards would be. Uh, in, in the case coming up, uh, we're recommending that we default to, uh, you know, uh, preserving the NCD uh, standards. I don't understand what's going on. So somebody wanted to talk about Craig very quickly? Uh, that's the fifth item on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, back to the carport issue. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the carport? It's at uh, 1114 Linwood. You've probably seen it. If you haven't, it's immense. It goes way back. Uh, is there anybody who would really be in favor of keeping, uh, you know, the, allowing the, the person there to uh, keep the carport at this particular location? I, I, I think generally we're, you know, not in favor of the type of carport that's just a flat, you know, roof. It, it, it doesn't have any of the components necessary for the NCD, and this one doesn't even have one of them. I think we, we need to. Uh, uh, not approve that. Uh, can we, uh, all in favor of uh, uh, not being in support of this, raise your hand. What? Okay. Well, there, there's some, we, there's some that uh, are coming up. We've got uh, property on, on capital. Uh, Marianne? Marianne? Yeah, would you like to uh, give us a little bit of background on this? Uh, there are six different addresses, right? Yes. Can, can you tell There's us? Six different addresses because two of the, two of the dwellings are duplexes. So in this case, we've got a property owner that owns four properties, three properties, four properties, and he wants to, he's asking, going for the Planning and Zoning Commission <coughs> to take him out of the current zone, and he wants IBZ zone, which pretty much gives him the authority to do whatever he wants with the property. So he's, not, he's asking to step out of the current zoning that he's in and go IBZ. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Right. Uh, this is a, a case where... Uh, is the address of the street? Uh, it is... Um, 1147 West Rosewood and 1140 West Lowood, and it really incorporates uh, the property between Lowood and Rosewood on Capitol. So corner to corner, Capitol, Lowood, to Rosewood. And it's uh, 1410, 1414, and 1416 Capitol. Uh, so it's on now. It's his own single family. Single family. He wants to go. So he's, he's, he's really zoned, out of compliance. He's, and mark, he's zoned RM4. RM4. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between RM4 and IDZ is uh, pretty immense. Uh, what uh, uh, we, what we're always trying I, to do. Yeah, the story I heard was that the owner who's on those properties and had them rented out for a long time is looking to replat the properties so that he can sell those houses. Um, he claims to the renters, which sounds all very idealistic. Maybe that's true, maybe not, and maybe long-term owners. But in order for him to be able to sell to individual owners, those lots have to be replatted. And um, for that reason, they need IBC because they're too small. There isn't a zoning, a single family zoning designation for a 2,000 square foot lot. Right. And uh, the other issue that we don't know about is what are the other options that uh, this person could pursue? We've had uh, several cases in the neighborhood where we've uh, given uh, very uh, uh, commercial development sort of things to residents and uh, in one instance over by the uh, Presbyterian Church right across from there 
the person uh, only requested a commercial use for their property and a uh, very nice person, but they died, I think, within three months after our granting it, and now uh, we've had to deal with uh, the consequences. And whatever you zone for a property, it isn't just for the person that's there. You have to think about what the consequences are going to be you know, long term, and that's why we really are trying to encourage many people that it, it, can to come to zoning because it really is involved. It's, it's not just this one instance, it's what possibly could happen. And to be honest, with IDZ, we don't really know what his plans are. He hasn't been here, he hasn't really uh, communicated with us. He seems to be a fairly sophisticated uh, property owner. Uh, I was told that he's an attorney. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, we have to assume that he's fairly aware of, of what he's asking for in terms of an IDC. And I don't think we really have enough information about this property because he hasn't come to us to really support it at this time. So, uh, you know, unless somebody knows something that they could present, that I would not think we'd want to be supportive of that change to IDC. Yes? I move that we deny the request to change. Uh, can we, might be better even if we did that in, in it, 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 we'd be find out more. Uh, we may be in support, but I don't well, know. I but as it is on the surface, I think. So far, it definitely yeah. relates to 930 West Craig. But that's coming up next. Okay. Mark. Yes. I think what I think what I am expecting here is that you're giving us the zoning case. Right. You're letting us know what the zoning committee where deliberations are on the end for. And that's it, because y'all are going to make the decisions because we just voted to give y'all the right to make those decisions. Well, I, I'd like to go through the ones that we do have and we can get some support. There are going to be some other ones coming up that we don't know about. So right now I'm just trying to go through a couple of the simple ones that we can uh, deal with as a neighborhood. Uh, so I, I, I hate to go completely against it, but I don't think we can support it until we know more about it. Yes, Jerry? We should not support pretty much in our history says if you're moving from residential to and you're in the you know in the boundaries of the right. residential that we're not going to support change to a commercial and just especially out of the city. Yeah. Uh, Mark, any okay. because yeah, you know, it's like stick up. Yes. Mark, uh, I think what you're doing is find the idea that stuff we don't know about and let the, the zoning and urban design committee take care of it during the summer interim. So right now you're just presenting some cases where yes. the, the, the Zoning and Urban Design Committee does have some recommendations and you're asking for the body to either uh, approve it or, or deny it. So my suggestion is, first of all, don't just talk in acronyms because we don't know what, N many people do not know what NCD stands for. Neighborhood yeah, Conservation what, District. Good. They don't know what IDZ stands for. Infill in Development. Infill in Development. Okay, well, the idea is to simply Tell us what the case is, and to tell us what, what, what the committee it's, recommendation is, why they suggested it, and then maybe open it for, for a minute or two of discussion, and then have a vote. Okay. Uh, I guess on this one, which uh, their, you know, our, our situation is that we would, as a committee, not recommend that we change uh, this. Uh, property zoning to IDZ at this time. We don't really know enough about it, and it seems like a, a, the the type of development that could go in there would not be advantageous to the neighborhood, in our opinion. It, it solves his problem, but it, it could present a big problem for us further down the line if somebody took the same property, bought it, tore out those houses, and uh, started putting some businesses in there. Uh, we, we may not be happy with the kind of business they put in. And uh, there's a huge issue with parking as well. Mark, just for time, time can, can we just talk about um, uh, Craig and let the, 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 yes. let the committee decide Let's, on the rest of them? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> got one more property that we need to uh, discuss. Uh, very quickly, there's a... a situation where we've had uh, 
some properties. We're a, we're a renter's neighborhood. Uh, most of the properties in here are actually rentals, and most of the, the people that live in the neighborhood are renters. Uh, it's changed a lot. We're getting much closer to, you know, kind of a 50-50 split, but we're not there yet. And uh, we have a, a situation where it's after the Depression, most of the homes had taken in orders, they got divided up. Uh, we have properties that are not compliant because they're apartments and they've been used for apartments for decades and they're in the middle of uh, what are now single family uh, zoned areas. And that happened in the 1990s sometime, I'm not sure exactly when, maybe somebody does know, but uh, the city changed and it, these properties had always been apartments. And uh, now their zoning had been changed to uh, reflect single family usage. Yeah, that, and that was back in 1997. 97, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Catherine, maybe you could come up and explain What's about the your house. Of this, property that you're talking about? Uh, this property is. Uh, my, my yeah, Catherine. This is 1030 West Russell. Yeah, 1030 West Russell, and and I, I I would normally, you know, say we we're we're wanting to keep all the single family properties that we can as single family, but this one has been, you know, I mean, it, it, she's going to pass around some pictures of it. It looks like an apartment building. It's been an apartment building a long time, and what she's asking her support for is uh, having it. Uh, instead of a, a grandfather use as an apartment building, she wants to go for changing the zoning permanently to multifamily. To multifamily. Hi, I'm Catherine. Um, I had this issue arise. I've owned this property for 13 years, and um, I got a notice from Code Compliance telling me that I had to change it back to, I had 10 days to change it back to single family. Well, um, this, this building was erected as an apartment building in 1950. And um, there's a total of five apartments. And um, um, there's a total of five apartments. So I'm trying to get it. I've been going through the um, business development in um, the San Antonio Development Services. And then I talked to Councilman Trevino's office. They told me that I have to get Beacon Hills um, approval in order to present it to city council for the change for the permanent you know permanent zoning of multi family. So I, uh, can I just clarify so you're you it said it was built as multifamily. Yes. Used as multifamily. It used to be known as the Beverly Arms. Apartment. Okay, I know the exact building. Yes. And you're just trying to get this the zoning change to reflect the historic use of the property. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, I, I was totally unaware because that I bought it in 2003, and I had no idea that they had changed it, changed the zoning. So, and then when I get this letter, I was like, okay, how can I change it back to single family in 10 days, or I'd be fine. So that's kind of what I'm going through. I've been going um, through the development services, and you know, so I'm just kind of, I just really want it permanently, so I don't have to deal with. It. Yes. <laughs> are you living in one of the apartments? No. Are you living near it? Um, I, I mean, I live close. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I live in Alamo Heights, so I live pretty close. I'm not far. So. Is it a four place? It's five. Yeah. It's, it's the main building that has four apartments, and then it's um, an apartment in the back. So what's the zoning that you need, and then what? Um, well, they, they were telling me, I mean, I could do the IDC, or I think it's the multifamily six is what I need. Yeah. No, it would be MF25 or MF33. Oh, no, MF33. Yes, yes, MF, sorry. Yeah, MF33. Yeah, so, um, does anybody have any questions about it? Yeah. Yes. Now that one is just the apartment in the back. Okay. So the front of your bay is your building space. Which direction? Uh, east or west? North. Right? Yes. 
Court at Cleveland. So the, the property on your east, so that you're facing the house on your left, uh -huh. is that a single family that, home? No, that one it has three, three, three units. And, yes. the, and then the one on the other side is single family. Single family. And then across uh -huh. the street? Single family. How many other multifamily buildings are there on your block? There's quite a few. I don't think there's as many. I know that there's a lot of, you know, triplexes and maybe some other fourplexes. But I know down the street there are multiple ones. Yes. I really think it's important for this group to make decisions. We would need to see the, the buildings. We cannot just imagine. Oh, there's there's pictures, but there's only yeah, there's different. But I feel like there are more buildings on the other Oh, there, there's there's only a little studio in the back, and there's a picture of it right there. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Did anybody at the city talk to you about it being re registered as a non-conforming use? Yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm working on right now. But like I said, I'd like to do it, have it permanently. So they would make you actually register it as a non-conforming use. They're not saying to you it already um, it already enjoys a non-conforming use. No, they have to go through okay. and prove, you know, get all the information. And How much is that? That was three fifty. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to use the Mark, what was the committee's recommendation on this case? We have, we have not really discussed this case other than in, in passing. We haven't made a recommendation on it. The, the issue really that we're dealing with is we have hundreds in our neighborhood, literally hundreds of properties just like this. And if, yeah. We, we don't have a really good answer for it, and that's why we're bringing it up before the group. I'd like to make a motion to support, um, is it Turner? Yeah, uh -huh. Ms. Turner's request to have her property, which has historically been operating as a multifamily property. Um, hands up for questions. Okay, oh. no, I'm second the motion. Well, let's, let's, let's get the motion and then we can discuss it. That's the motion. Okay. Uh, to allow it to be rezoned uh, to correctly reflect its Use. All right. Is there a second? What zoning is that, though? What yes, zoning sir. has that? I'm at 33. Can yes. I just have a real quick question on that? If in the future that structure were demolished for whatever reason, what is a worst case scenario that could replace that as an MF33? Probably what we're going to discuss next at 930. Um, the, it, it's a calculation based on the size of the lot. Right. So, so what could be? So what could replace it? A five-story building? Or no. Five? no. No. It's, it's 30, right. Okay. It's 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 33 it's would be a three-story. 44, I guess, four-story. No. No. Um, do you know how big your lot is? Um, I do. I think it's like. Yeah, it's 0.1922. Okay, so less than a, a less than a quarter acre, so less than a quarter of 33. The MF 33 <coughs> means 33 units per acre. Right. right? Okay. But they also have to take into consideration setbacks and so okay. forth. That doesn't always As necessarily max. guarantee. 6.3. So 6.3 minus the setback, she's got five units on there, even if that building would get demolished. Um, it doesn't seem to me, in the way I understand the MF33 designation, that that would um, allow for much, many more units, potentially one, if you say six point something. So. Now, can I go for a second? We have one that we're going to talk about next, and we probably should talk about that one first and see what could happen, because that one is, is an MF33, and they are non conforming. They, their setback is not, um, doesn't appear to NCD. The city overrode us on that. They have more than 90% impervious structure. Were so they building the single family? No, it's not single family. family. It's six units. Yeah. So then I'd like to interject that this is an existing structure. As the owner of the building came here in good faith to ask for our support, um, I am a, my husband and I own a multi family building in London. And I would be horrified just to suddenly find that it was always it was built as an apartment building in the 
20s from the get-go, um, my R's were in. And I can't, uh, I feel for you in your situation. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, the motion to say it, right? That's second. So I'm second. sorry, I'm going to have to agree to I mean, this, this project was built in the 1950s as an apartment building. And we're talking about being a store and keeping the control of your neighborhood. That's perfect. We should allow that. that. That's what it was originally constructed for. It's not somebody taking, you know, demolishing ten houses and building these high rises. It's not somebody taking a single family home and it and turn it into a duplex. This is a house that was built in the 1950s for this purpose. So we have a seconded. Um, do we have more discussion or can we take this on? Yeah. Can we make? Why was the zoning changed to the with? Oh, that's a good question. Back in '97, it, it was it was a multi-family. The whole area was, and then in 1997, they changed it all to single-family. All over the Without all over our family. area. Mm -hmm. Without looking at Not just being in no risk. Um, can we do it as a conditional? That way, it, it's pertaining to that structure. We're only voting on that structure. It's not for every other building. It's just this building. Well, but the I know that what you're saying is, land, is so in, the land. in order to prevent this from being a situation where somebody builds a three-story uh, apartment on it uh, in case there's a fire later on, which you know is reasonable, uh, is there a way to put a restriction on it that uh, would be agreeable to everyone? Is, is there something besides MF 33 that would better fit the size of what's already there? Anybody with zoning want to make a suggestion for something else besides MF 33? We can do what we did on Craig, but that's a pretty elaborate process. That's a pretty elaborate process. You could make it MF uh, 25 and that would reduce the number of lots per acre. That would be the other option. Do you know? They may have told you MF33 because that's maybe what you need to accommodate the five. So if she can't accommodate the five on MF25, then that doesn't work. But that would be the other option. When do you go? Have you, are you going in front of zoning yet or anything? No, I mean, they, they had told me that, well, Councilman Trudeau's office had told me that I have to get Beacon Hills Committee, you know, the Beacon Hills Committee blessing before that they would, you know, hear it and take that's, it. That's not true. To be heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not true. Uh, that's and what Jerry, they told he's me. He's asking you to be nice and, and you're doing the right thing. Uh -huh. But well, zoning we don't need our permission. Well, uh, well that's what they don't need it, but zoning will ask you and so forth. But just have you reached out to the neighborhood and what did they say? And they'll take that into account. Yeah. 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 So they it. said that once they get that, then they'll take it in front of city council. So, can we have a vote and move on? Okay. Can we vote? Is there any more discussion? Call for the Call for a question. Can we vote? Can we vote? Uh, all, in, all in favor of uh, changing the supporting your zoning request. Was conditional or not? Yeah. No. MF33. Okay. Now, we're at two. All those opposed? All those opposed? Motion carries. Next, we're on to uh, uh, property at 930 West Craig, and uh, there's just been an awful lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, messages on Facebook all over the place about this one. Uh, I don't, yes, hardly know where to begin except, uh, yes, you can. Can I start by tying it to one you were talking about a minute ago? Yes. They are asking. First, who's they? And first, let's see. Yeah. The, let's the owner. The no, owner. I know. Where are we talking about? At 930 West Craig. And what is the question? It is a vacant lot. A vacant lot. Okay. And it is zoned MF33. It's a small vacant lot. And they are in the process of building six units, of which it says. <laughs> Each will be individually sold and owned individually. And so they are separating the foundation into six individual spots. Okay. Uh, that's not exactly what I heard this morning when it went down. Now that's what's on their permit application. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly. I think what we're doing right now is we're, we're going to get as much information as we can about it. 
but I, I've heard different things from last week to this week. Well, I went and looked at the foundation today. Oh, yeah, I saw that, too. Uh, th they've got a bunch of problems, and uh, people have noticed the construction. They've uh, lit up our Facebook page, and I'm trying to give answers to people that, uh, you know, have questions. So if you have a question about it, uh, we've asked. about five feet off of the alley property line. The middle third is going to be the driveway. And the left-hand third is another three units, which are also three foot off of the side property line. Now, this driveway, when I have stepped it off, it's no more than 20 feet wide. So if they are going to put garages on the first floor, they're going to have to have very small cars and very good drivers to make a sharp 90 degree turn without knocking down the buildings. It is way too small for what they're trying to do. Okay. And, and my understanding is that uh, a lot of the people were uh, wondering about it being three stories yes, high. Three stories high. Which is a lot different than most of the properties in there, which are single family and one story high. Mm -hmm. Yes. So is it zoned properly? I mean, is it? Yes, it's zoned MF33. So but there are, there are some issues with, with the uh, property because if they are going to sell them as single units, my understanding from talking to the city the zoning department this morning is that uh, because of the, this is kind of like what they're, what they're building is a loophole in the, the, the writing of the zoning. It, it's sort of a little ambiguous, but it allows them to build uh, the six units there. They, they can do that. They can build them three feet, you know, or three stories high, uh, but uh, they have platted it as one property, so that means they only get one meter. <laughs> but they all by three feet. So, so, so now what they're talking about is doing it through like a condo development or something where everybody is you know, sharing the uh, utilities and stuff. Yes. That, that sounds a little awkward, yes. Their permit says that on March 17th, the electrical review was waived and CPS Energy okay, has approved so they that waived all individual that. meter per unit located at each unit. Yes. Okay, then I, I was lied to at uh, <laughs> Developmental Services and, and, and by the person that's in charge, so that's, that's confusing this morning. If I could add a little bit of yes. color to this, that it's, well, it's a multi-family building that's going in. It is six cabins being put on this one piece of property that allows what everyone would otherwise expect to be a six-unit apartment complex. But these are distinct, individual, essentially cabins. And but the, the three stories of cabins will not own the land because the land has not been divided into six. Right, so how can it be multifamily if you've got six well, it could be multifamily. Yeah, it could be multifamily. But selling them individually is problematic if the land isn't flatted, unless they yeah. come back in later and yeah. file a condemnation. I, I, I have a feeling they're going to come back in later and bring flat. Yes, Jack? Uh, Mark, it sounds like they're trying to shoehorn uh, a lot of the units into one small area here. Would you please tell us what are, tonight what our options are? We don't, and nobody's uh, uh, presented anything to the Neighborhood Association about this property. We've had no contact with the owners. We, we really, the only thing we're responding to right now is the uh, people asking questions about it. And so we're trying to answer the few questions we can answer, but to be honest, we are uh, 
finding out things differently every day? Well, so one, of the, one, of the first problems one of the first problems we witnessed is that there appears to be uh, a uh, invalid setback. It appears to be too close to the street. Has anyone looked into that? Yes, case? that we did. We sent a, a code enforcement person out there. Uh, they measured it and uh, apparently it is okay. It's within five feet the, the, of the average for the uh, setbacks for the front. So they're considering that legal. As far as the side setbacks go, uh, they're looking into that. They were looking into it today. Because it should be five feet, not three feet. But it is three. And what about the rear setback as well? <laughs> I'm sorry? The rear setback, the back Yeah, setback? The, the side and rear setbacks have to be appropriate as well, and three feet is, is not appropriate. Okay, and then I had a couple other questions. Sure. In the very beginning, there used to be two large pecan trees, two uh, heritage-sized pecan the trees. Huge heritage pecan right. trees. And those were um, illegally cut down without any permits. So they're not here in good faith, is <clears throat> what I'm saying on, on this. And. Has anyone seen the actual plans for what's happening? Uh, it, no, I don't think anybody's seen the actual plans for this happening. And so my concern is if the if the um, houses, if there's a central driveway, if each unit right. is facing the, the center, is that going against NCD um, standards? We don't know what the uh, situation is for parking yet. Well, no, no, that, which way they're, they're facing. The, each unit. Apparently what they're going to do is they're going to put a little porch off to the uh, you know, street side for each one of these. But again, that's just only what I've heard. And the person that told me that also told me that they probably only get one single meter. And so I, a, I don't trust any of that. And is it to get a permit for in, in an NCD neighborhood or district, does it not have to go through the um, neighborhood association? No. Is that no. required it at does all? Not. No. no. That is nor normally, we, we get, uh, you know, uh, NCD is contract. part of the city permitting process. So it's the city, when you go to pull a permit, it comes up, this is in an NCD, and then that there's a review on there. And if you go on the Development Services website under permits and uh, permitting, you can put in the address, it will bring up the permit number, and then you can click on there for comments. And you will see the different categories that get reviewed, plumbing, electrical, foundation, and there's one for neighborhood. And it will give you comments that the planner would have made based on their plans if they saw anything that was non-compliant. So you have to do this, you have to adjust that, you need to come back to us with drawings for this. And then if they do all of that, then under a second review, it may get approved. It may get denied again, and there may be additional comments. That is all visible on the Development Services website under their permit. So the plans are also visible? The plans are not. The plans are considered patented. We went through this when we were trying to see plans for stripes. You have to request those through an open records request. And then you have to go downtown to view them on a computer because they're done now digitally. You can't copy them. You can't take photographs of them. You can make notes. Okay. Unfortunately, we need to wrap this up. We'll, uh, I guess we're going to have to trust the zoning to make some decisions on this. But to be honest, we don't know enough about it. If you have questions, uh, see me after the meeting, Marianne. Well, this might be one where we actually have to go down and talk to city planners to ask them how to happen. Yeah, I, I, I did that this morning. Oh, I'll, I'll be, no, we'll have to do it again. I'll be there tomorrow morning. Thank you, Mark. I wish you could say that every meeting was this much fun. We never get into the weeds like this. It's just they're piling up so fast that zoning hasn't had a chance. So please, thank you for your patience. Um, I know that there, we're going to forgo committee reports tonight because we're just out of time. But um, we don't meet next month. We'll meet again in August. It'll be in the newsletter where we meet. I think there was some elected officials that wanted to say good night. Anybody officials. needed to say good night? Um, and it is. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your patience. Good night, and thank you for coming.